This learning module provides an overview of levy analysis and mapping procedures, also known as LAMP, for non-accredited levies that were released in July 2013. The topics to be covered in this presentation are levy definitions, the former levy analysis and mapping approach, the new levy analysis and mapping process for non-accredited levies, and how the approach will continue to evolve. What is a levy? A levy is a man-made structure, usually an earthen embankment, designed and constructed in accordance with sound engineering practices to contain, control, or divert the flow of water so as to provide protection from temporary flooding. Earthen levees are made from earth or soil which is compacted to make the levee as strong and stable as possible. To protect against erosion and scouring, levees can be covered with everything from grass and gravel to harder surfaces like stone, asphalt, or concrete. No levy is floodproof. Levees may reduce the risk during certain flood events, but they do not provide complete protection from flooding. Levees can and do deteriorate over time and must be maintained to retain their effectiveness. There are three types of common failures, overtopping, breaching, and seepage. Overtopping occurs when floodwaters exceed the height of a levee and flow over its crown. As water passes over the top, it may erode the levee, potentially causing a breach in the levee. A levee breach occurs when part of a levee gives way, creating an opening through which floodwaters may pass. A breach may occur gradually or suddenly. The most dangerous breaches happen quickly during periods of high water. Seepage occurs when, over time, water begins to seep under or through a levee, creating weak spots in its structure. Sand boils and wet spots cause the soil to become unstable and compromise the levee structure, possibly resulting in a total collapse of the levee. Per Procedure Memorandum Number 52, Guidance for Mapping Processes Associated with Levee Systems, FEMA requires levee owners seeking the recognition of a levee to provide data and documentation demonstrating that the levee system meets the requirements of 44 CFR 6510 if the levee system is to be accredited on a digital flood insurance rate map. If FEMA does not receive the 44 CFR 6510 compliant data and documentation, the levy is not accredited and the area landward of the levy will be identified as a special flood hazard area. When a levy was found to be in compliance with 44 CFR 6510, the flood hazard was mapped to be contained within the levy system. This is an accredited levy system. However, areas with non-accredited levies were mapped as if the levy system provided no flood hazard reduction. This is called a without levy analysis. The risk map program mission is that through collaboration with state and local entities, RiskMap will deliver quality data that increases public awareness and leads to action that reduces risk to life and property. The focus is still on flood risk. FEMA understands that levy systems do not meet the regulatory accreditation requirements in 44 CFR 6510, but may still provide a measure of flood risk reduction. With developing the new approach and ongoing NFIP reform, FEMA's Risk Map program is continuing to help communities understand their flood risk. The following flood risk themes are addressed by the Risk Map program and the new approach. Moving toward a modern risk-based analysis, improving flood risk awareness, recognizing uncertainty in flood risk, supporting local risk management strategies, communicating flood risk behind levees, synchronizing methodologies with the United States Army Corps of Engineers, and developing a consistent federal message. Some definitions to remember are that a levy is a man-made structure, usually an earthen embankment, designed and constructed in accordance with sound engineering practices to contain, control, or divert the flow of water so as to provide protection from temporary flooding. A levy system is the flood protection system that consists of a levy or flood walls levies and associated structures such as closure and drainage devices which are constructed and operated in accordance with sound engineering practices to reduce the likelihood of flooding due to an adjacent flooding source such as a river, lake, ocean, or other body of water. An accredited levy system is a levy system that meets all of the requirements outlined by 44 CFR 6510 and therefore is shown on the flood insurance rate maps as providing protection from the base or 1% annual chance flood. A non-accredited levy system is a system that does not meet the requirements of 44 CFR 6510. Therefore, the levy system is shown on the flood insurance rate map as not providing protection from the 1% annual chance flood. Reasons for non-accredited status include inadequate freeboard, lack of maintenance and or operational plans, and documented structural issues within the system or lack of documentation. The without levy analysis for a levy system that does not meet the requirements of 44 CFR 6510 and is therefore an analyzed and mapped flood hazards as if the levy had no effect on the landward side of the levy system.
As you can see in these photos, levy systems look different because they are built and designed differently based on how they are being used, site constraints, material availability, and other factors. This slide displays a timeline of developing the new approach for non-accredited levies. In February 2011, members from both the House of Representatives and the Senate wrote letters requesting that FEMA discontinue the without levy approach for analyzing levy systems and mapping the areas impacted by the levy system when those levy systems do not fully comply with the NFIP regulatory requirements cited at 44 CFR 6510. Until March 2011, FEMA identified flood hazards and produced updated firms utilizing its without levy approach. Because stakeholders expressed concern about this approach, FEMA agreed that the approach required review and further consideration. At the same time, FEMA was engaged in an ongoing comprehensive review of the NFIP to identify reforms and enable FEMA to better address the flood hazards faced by Americans nationwide. FEMA included the without levy analysis and mapping approach issue as an important consideration in the ongoing NFIP reform efforts, yet recognized that NFIP reform is a long-term solution and near-term changes were needed to address this issue. Subsequent to the events of 2011, the U.S. Congress passed the Bigert Waters Flood Insurance Reform and Modernization Act of 2012, which extended the National Flood Insurance Program for five years and included reforms to the NFIP. Specific to levies and associated flood control systems, the Act reinforces the approach presented, which is that FEMA, along with its technical partners, including state and local government, will identify appropriate measures and take into consideration investments in levy systems and flood control systems. Consequently, the approach presented is the first step in addressing levy-related issues. FEMA will continue to work on longer-term solutions to levy-related issues. So how did FEMA develop the new approach? Stakeholders, including the U.S. Congress, did not think that the former without levy approach accurately reflected flood hazards in areas landward of levies and asked FEMA to change their approach. FEMA agreed and the processing of studies and map revisions that were already underway was put on hold. FEMA established a multidisciplinary project team with representatives from FEMA and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, as well as experts from academic and engineering communities. The FEMA-led team explored a broad spectrum of levy analysis and mapping procedures, selected procedures for effectiveness in proof-of-concept case studies using a small number of theoretical scenarios that simulated real-world situations that communities might reasonably encounter, assessed the feasibility of each procedure using several key criteria, solicited feedback from key internal and external stakeholders. Feedback was gathered in several ways, a feasibility review, where FEMA and the Army Corps of Engineers reviewed to ensure consistency with feasibility criteria, an independent scientific body focused on technical aspects of the approach and procedures, a community roundtable was a focus group that looked at community impacts and input, there was a public review where the approach document was posted online for general public review and comment, and FEMA delivered three online forums, Tabletop exercises were conducted where the project team continued testing and scenarios to define and improve implementation details, and there was guidance development where input from these events and further stakeholder engagement before in-process guidance was finalized. FEMA then convened a multidisciplinary project team with representatives from FEMA, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and experts from the academic and engineering communities to evaluate technical options for non-accredited levy systems. The FEMA-led team explored a broad spectrum of levy analysis and mapping procedures, evaluated the procedures based on a number of flooding scenarios that communities might reasonably encounter, assessed the feasibility of these procedures using several key criteria, and obtained feedback from internal and external stakeholders. FEMA posted a public review document to the Federal Register Notice from December 15, 2011 until January 30, 2012 to generate feedback. FEMA held three public online forums to walk participants through the public review document, provide clarification, and answer questions. Over 1,400 comments from 160 individual submittals were received. These comments influenced the approach in various ways, including applicability of the new process, definition of a levy and non-levy, embankment issues, local input, levy reaches, and document structure. In March 2013, the National Research Council of the National Academy of Sciences released a pre-publication version of the report, Levies and the National Flood Insurance Program, Improving Policies and Practices. FEMA's new approach for modeling and mapping non-accredited levies represents an important first step towards addressing many of the conclusions and recommendations of the report. The following key themes from the NAS report are addressed by FEMA's risk map program and the new analysis and mapping approach. Key themes include moving toward a risk-based analysis, improved flood risk awareness, recognition of the uncertainty in flood risk, 
locally tailored risk management, improved risk communication, synchronizing methodologies with the Army Corps of Engineers, and developing a consistent federal message. LAMP was not intended to be a holistic solution for addressing levies within the NFIP, as LAMP work groups were not allowed to make overarching changes in the National Flood Insurance Program. LAMP was intended to review levies from a solely engineering perspective. Levy systems may be analyzed using one or more procedures to identify potential flood hazard risk on the landward side of the levy system. The alternative procedures are comply with all current statutory and regulatory requirements governing the NFIP, be a cost-effective, repeatable, and flexible approach, leverage local input, knowledge, and data through proactive stakeholder engagement, align available resources for engineering analysis and mapping, and consider unique levy and flooding characteristics. Each levy system will be reviewed and local input weighed for FEMA to determine the approach which will be applied to determine the landward side flood risk. The resultant flood risk depicted on the flood insurance rate map panel will indicate the most conservative or each of the procedures used along a levy system. It should be noted that it cannot be predicted that one approach or procedure will result in a smaller floodplain. All applicable procedures will be reviewed for application to a levy system to best determine the flood risk in the vicinity of a levy system. The first step to creating this new approach was to divide a levy system into reaches to more precisely evaluate the flood hazard. The following suite of new procedures have undergone an extensive process of scientific review and public input. Sound reach, freeboard deficient, overtopping, structural based inundation, and natural valley scenarios. A number of reaches in the nation's levees are known to be in compliance with the requirements outlined in 44 CFR 6510, but these systems also have reaches with deficiencies, so the entire levee system cannot be accredited. This approach is used to prepare the mapping for the reaches that are documented to be sound, meeting all design and construction, operation and maintenance, and documentation criteria outlined in 44 CFR 6510. This method will be used for reaches known to meet all requirements and will require documentation and data from the levy owner or local community to demonstrate the levy reach is sound. The difference here between the sound reach and freeboard deficient procedures is only the reach does not meet freeboard requirements of NFIP regulations, three foot for riverine and one foot above 1% annual chance wave or max wave runup for coastal, or one of the exceptions outlined in 44 CFR 6510. This procedure may be used under the following conditions. The reach has been documented to be structurally sound. The crest of the levee is higher than the BFE, but the freeboard between the BFE and the crest of the levee does not provide an adequate factor of safety. An operations and maintenance plan for the system must exist, and data supporting effective operation and maintenance is available and has been provided to FEMA. For NFIP purposes, three feet of freeboard in riverine situations is an acceptable factor of safety. In coastal areas, freeboard for NFIP purposes is one foot above the height of the 1% annual chance wave or the maximum wave runup, whichever is greater. A registered professional engineer must certify structural data on the closures, embankment, foundation, and settlement potential. The levy owner must submit a complete analysis and documentation package to FEMA for the reach. The package must include the same data and information typically required to accredit a levy system, including all certifications with the exception of freeboard considerations. The data must also clearly identify the limits of the freeboard deficient reach and include an interior drainage analysis for the landward side of the requested reach. The interior drainage analysis will be performed assuming that any adjacent reaches will remain intact. If the BFE has been determined to exceed the levy height, the levy is not considered to be freeboard deficient. This procedure is applicable for a levy which may have one foot of freeboard when the 44 CFR 6510 regulations require three foot freeboard. The overtopping procedure is applicable when the following conditions are met. The BFE for the reach is higher than the crest of the levy. It can be demonstrated that the overtopping will not result in a structural failure of the levy. An operation and maintenance plan exists for this reach of the system and data supporting effective operation and maintenance has been provided to FEMA. The levy owner must submit a complete analysis and documentation package for the reach, including certified structural analysis that indicates the levy is designed and constructed to withstand the 1% annual chance flood event, survey or as-built data for the levy crest, an analysis indicating no appreciable erosion of the levy crest, toes, embankment, or foundation can be expected during the overtopping of the 1% annual chance as a result of either currents or waves, and the anticipated erosion will not result in the structural failure. The documentation submitted should include the hydrologic and hydraulics analysis used to determine the duration and extent of overtopping expected during the 1% annual chance flood event. The structural-based inundation procedure will be used for reaches with defined structural issues, 
such as slope stability, seepage, or piping. The structural-based inundation procedure may result in higher elevations than the natural valley procedure. The structural-based inundation procedure will be used in easily identified areas of weakness, higher risk areas, and areas with extensive good quality data available. Mapping results from a composite of the analysis of inundation at each potential breach location. Failure modes can be either overtopping or internal depending on which portions of the 44 CFR 6510 the levy breach fails to meet. Accurately predicting actual breach locations and shapes is not feasible. Expected minimum of two model breaches per reach. Model breach locations will not be evident on the final firm. Each breach is independent. Any link along the reach is subject to breaching. Special flood hazard area on the flood insurance rate map will be a composite of 1% annual chance floodplain developed at each breach location. Levy systems are potentially compromised by vegetation, burrowing animals, or fill materials known to be weak against hydrostatic pressures. The natural valley procedure is appropriate when the levy reach is so significantly overtopped that the existence of the levy does not have a noticeable effect on the water surface elevation. The level of risk is deemed low based on initial review of hazard potential classification and discussion with the community. No data to support the use of another procedure are available, or a community prefers to use this method for a reach or the entire system. There are no data requirements for this procedure. The hydraulic significance of the levee is tested to see if the levee has an impact on the water surface elevation. The reach is modeled by leaving the levee in the model but allowing the discharge to flow on either side of the levee. Four aspects of the new approach include interactive stakeholder engagement process such as a local levee partnership team, more robust levee analysis and mapping procedures, recognition of the uncertainty associated with levee systems, and analysis of levee reaches. FEMA will use the new process to produce flood insurance rate maps, flood insurance study reports, and related products for communities and tribes impacted by non-accredited levee systems until they are replaced by longer-term solutions developed through NFIP regulatory reform. Again, a core goal of the new procedures includes identifying more refined flood hazards associated with non-accredited levee systems and reflecting the results in flood insurance rate maps and related products. An important outcome of the effort is increasing the credibility of flood insurance rate maps where non-accredited levy systems exist. While FEMA strives to refine flood hazard identification, the new approach is not intended to determine the risk, level of protection, or probability of failure for specific levies or levy systems. The agency is aware that the LAMP approach requires more interaction between FEMA and local communities and is committed to understanding their knowledge and operation of a levy system and collaborating to determine the appropriate LAMP approaches. Key documents will provide the communities, levy owners, and local project sponsors with a clearer idea of how their participation will be accommodated in the new process. The agency will engage with pilot project communities to document their applications of LAMP, refine the standards and guidance for implementation, and prepare educational and training materials for future communities that will be engaged in LAMP. With the passage of the Big Waters Flood Insurance Reform Act of 2012 and the long-term conclusions and recommendations from the NAS report, information and guidance will continue to emerge that can affect FEMA's approach to analyzing and mapping levy systems. FEMA plans to implement LAMP on a larger scale across the nation in future years, applying the lessons learned in the pilot projects. Visit the webpage shown to access additional information regarding FEMA's revised levy analysis and mapping procedures. So what can you do? Information for homeowners, business owners, and the general public is available. You can understand your flood risk and take an active role in reducing your risk. For community officials, you can communicate the flood risk, identify flood risk, participate in the USACE levy system assessment, and engage the public and stakeholders. For more information, consult the references on the slide or contact the Risk Communication Specialist at the Kentucky Division of Water. This concludes our module on levy analysis. For more information on levies and the incorporation of LAMP, please view the Levy Engineering module.